One thing I thought I would mention to you about this uh, waterproof Bible here that we're giving away is this is my Bible. Yes. Right? So um, I bought this at camp, and uh, I've been using this Bible. It's got my name in the front there, whatever. And uh, so this is my Bible, and I'll uh, sign it for you. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be yours if you bring the most visitors. So um, that would be, be really cool. So hope that'll, that'll, that'll work out. So Now, you guys have a Bible? Anybody need a Bible? All right, if you've already got it, you got it in Matthew chapter 7. All right, very good. Well, uh, you're in Matthew chapter 7, but I'm in Acts, and that's okay. So you stay in Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to get to where you are in just a second, okay? I want to read something here just quickly for you from Acts chapter 17. All right, Paul goes to the Apostle Paul. He goes to a city by the name of Thessalonica, and uh, he's there in Thessalonica for about three weeks, and then uh, there's a mob that gets stirred up in Thessalonica, and they don't like uh, what the Apostle Paul is preaching, and they, they run him out of town, and uh, he goes over to the next town, and uh, the town there is called Berea. And he's there only a very short time, and then the, the mob that was stirred up over in, here in Thessalonica, they come all the way over to the city in Berea too, and they kick him out of Berea, and he ends up having to go uh, quite a few hundred miles away uh, from there. But when he goes to Berea, he makes a comparison in Acts chapter 17. He says something about the Bereans that he did not say about the Thessalonians. And I just want to read that to you real quick here out of Acts chapter 17. It says, And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas by night into Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So he just left Thessalonica, just now come into Berea. And he says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they... <laughs> Receive the word with all readiness of mind, and search the scriptures. Anybody know what the next word is? Daily. That's a fascinating verse there. Okay? Um, this is not really the message tonight, but I just wanted to talk about this as a little bit of an introduction. I, I want to give each person that's here today all right, a challenge that you would make time to read the Bible every single day. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, right? but I do want to ask you a question, okay? Do you have a Bible? All right? If you don't have a Bible, you need to get one, okay? And I want to challenge you, too. If you don't have a Bible, uh, Mr. Charlie right here, Mr. Andrew, Mr. Devin, Pastor Price, I want you to talk to them, and they'll help you get the right kind of Bible, okay? And get a Bible and start reading the Bible. How often should you read the Bible? Every day. Every day. Okay? And it's fascinating. The statement that's made there in uh, Thessalonians is that the, the Bereans were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they read and searched the Bible every single day. Okay? Now, who wrote the Bible? God wrote the Bible. That's just a simple answer to it. Okay? So, God here is making a comparison between two groups of people. He says, this group of people over here, he actually says in referring, in referring to the group at Thessalonica, he said, they received the word of God. And that was a good thing. Okay? But he said, those people in Berea, they received the word of God, but they were more noble than those over here in Thessalonica. Did you know that God makes comparisons between groups of people, and then God also makes comparisons between individuals? Did you, did you know that? Have you ever thought about that? Anthony, do you ever know that maybe God compares you with Devin? Did you ever think about that? Right? He does. Okay? And God knows and compares people. All right? Now, He loves us. All right? But, you know, He makes comparisons. And here He says, those in Berea were more noble. Now, I just wonder, if God was to compare you with somebody else, I wonder what He would say. Would you be more noble than someone else? Or would you be less noble than someone else? That's a good question, isn't it? It's a good question, right? Now, according to this verse, what do you have to do to be more noble than most people? Read, read, read your Bible every day. Right? That's a habit every person should have. Psalm 119. I'm just going to flip over. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read a verse to you. All right? uh, Psalm 119, whole chapter, the longest chapter in the Bible, is about the Word of God. Psalm 119, verse 9 says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Hey, how shall a young man know what to do? We're all men here tonight. There's no women. Okay? All right, well, there are some ladies here in the back, but there's no girls here, right? All right, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How shall he know what's right? How shall he get right with God? How shall he know what to do? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay? Now, how are you going to know what the Bible says if you're not reading the Bible? 
You're going to come to church and you're going to listen to preaching? That's good. You should do that. That's, uh, what, you maybe come and you get, what, two sermons on a Sunday? If you come Sunday morning and Sunday night, and another sermon on Wednesday, so what, you might get three things from the Bible every week? You need more than that. You know, the Bible, when you read the Bible... It refers to, it's kind of like kind of like eating food, right? You're getting the nourishment that, that you need, right? How many times do you eat every day? You're teenagers. How many times do you eat every day? Four, five, six. Man, when I was your age, man, I just ate all the time, right? I just ate and ate and ate. You guys ever been to Denny's? Yeah. You ever had a Grand Slam breakfast at Denny's? Yeah. yeah. All right, when I was around 17, I went there with my mom, and my mom was footing the bill. Praise the Lord for moms. I'm telling you, it's just great, right? <laughs> I ordered a Grand Slam breakfast. Two pancakes, two pieces of bacon, two scrambled eggs. And I think I had some orange juice there too, right? Actually, it's four pieces of bacon because I think it comes with bacon and sausage, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. All right. So I had all that there. And I ate that thing. I looked at Mom. I said, man, Mom, I'm starving. I ordered another Grand Slam breakfast, right? I ate that one. I said, Mom, I'm so hungry. I ordered another Grand Slam. Three Grand Slam breakfasts, right? One morning. Ate all three of them. I asked for a fourth. Right? I asked for the fourth Grand Slam breakfast, and my mom said no. Right? I said, but I could eat all the time. Right? Just loved it. Just eating it. Taking it in. Taking it in. That's the way we need to be with God's Word. Right? Just, just love it. Eat it. Right? Take it in. Consume God's Word. That's the only way you're going to get to know God. It's the only way you're going to get to know God. You know, if we only understood how much trouble God has gone through to give us His Word, and then for us to have it and not read it, I mean, it's a, real, it's a real slap in God's face, to be honest with you. For us to have God's Word that He's given to man, dictated, not dictated, but moved and allowed men to write a, a perfect work here, and He has it, and we have the very words of God, we have everything that God wants us to know about Him right here in this book, and all you've got to do is read it to find out about God. It's amazing. So can I just give you that challenge? If you don't have a Bible, get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, talk to Pastor Price or one of these men about what kind of Bible to get. Uh, you can't go to the bookstore today and just pick any Bible up off the shelf. Okay, It's, it's a little more complicated than that. I'm not going to go into the specifics, but you get some guidance. All right, Make sure that you get the right Bible, and then you'll have the Word of God, and you can read it, and you can learn about God. Okay, I find it fascinating, that verse I read there in Psalm chapter 119. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to his word. Now it's fascinating. When you read the Bible, you're not supposed to just read it for knowledge. What does taking heed mean? Okay? It's not just read the Bible so you can know what it says, but it's read the Bible so that you can take heed thereto according to it. How do you take heed? You obey what you read. Alright, so God says, do something, right? Then guess what you need to do? You need to do what God says. Okay? How shall a young man cleanse his way? Not by reading the Bible and knowing what I should be doing, right? but by actually doing what the Bible says. All right? So I challenge you guys to get a Bible and spend time in the Bible every single day. You're there in Matthew chapter 7. All right? I want us to look here at a passage. One of the things that I really appreciate about my pastor in South Carolina is every now and then, I'd say maybe once every month, once every two months, he will bring a message from his devotions that he's been having in his Bible reading that week. And I always find that those are some of his best messages, right? He brings something that God has spoken to him about that week, okay? I have been reading through the Old Testament. I'm reading through uh, First Chronicles right now. But I've also flipped over and I've started reading through the book of Matthew. And I just finished reading Matthew chapter 7. And I get here to this passage and um, I'm telling you, it just is so powerful. And it's so simple, right? And I just want to share with you some of the things that God's been dealing with me about, uh, even this week. And so that's kind of the purpose here. In my Bible reading, these are, uh, this is where I've been. So look in, in verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 24. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. All right? Pop quiz. Can I give some of these things out to somebody who can answer a question? All right? Yeah. There are two things in this verse that a man must do in order to be wise. Okay? If you can find something that a man must do in order to be wise, shout it out. Yes? Yes, yeah, so to hear the word and do the word. 
Okay, he didn't get just one, he got both. All right? Hear the word and do the word. All right? So how can you hear the word? Somebody, somebody, uh, somebody give me an answer other than, no, no, not you. All right? Somebody else. How can you hear the word? How? Listen. By listening. That's very good. All right? So you can come to church, you can do what you're doing right now. All right? And you listen. So how else can you hear the word? Also reading the Bible. By reading. All right? Very good. All right? So you have those two things there. Okay? So you can... You can hear the word, all right, by either reading it for yourself or listening, all right, to the word. Now it says that whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and, I love this part, and doeth them. In other words, you not only know what the Bible says, but you obey what the Bible says. I will liken him unto a wise man. It doesn't take a whole lot to be a wise man. All you've got to do is read the Bible, hear what it says, and then do what it says. That's, I mean, that's pretty straightforward and simple, isn't it, frankly? It's not that bad, right? Say, so how do I know your name? Is that right? <laughs> right? All right, now what happens to this man, the wise man? All right? He says, the Bible says that he's like a man who builds his house upon a rock. Okay? And then, when the rains descended, what a storm we had yesterday, right? Somebody lost power. You lost power yesterday, right? When the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, the trials of life, whenever they come, right, and it beats upon your house, it falls not because it's founded what? Upon a rock. What is the rock? The rock is that you hear the word and you do it. Okay? You hear the word and you do it. All right? Now, look at verse number 26. We're going to compare and contrast a wise man and a foolish man. All right? Look at it in verse 26. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. All right, look up here. All right, what does it take to be a foolish man? So like, listen to what you have to say but not actually doing it? Listen and then not do. Absolutely. All right? No, it's, it's fascinating. When I used to read this verse, I would think, you know, a wise man was somebody who went to church, right? And then a foolish man was somebody who, who didn't go to church. That's, that's not what the Bible verse is saying. You know, even those people that go to church, you can divide them into two categories. You can divide them into wise people and foolish people, right? You know what it takes to be a fool? All you have to do to be a fool is read this Bible, know what it says, and then what? Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Isn't that pretty straightforward, right? You want to be wise or you want to be a fool? Wise. You want to be wise. So what two things do you need to do? Read it and obey it. Boy, I'm telling you, you guys are really sharp. Well, everything Pastor Price said about you guys is not true. No, just kidding. Don't go on. Just kidding. laugh a little bit, right? Right? I mean, it's pretty easy to be wise, right? Just read the Bible and obey it. All right? Now, let's look at the foolish man, okay? It says here in verse number 27, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house. All right? So the same thing happened to the wise man, right? And his house stood firm. But look what happened to him. It says... And beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Right? You know, there's really only two choices that you can have. I, I find it fascinating whenever you read the Bible. The Bible is just so cut and dry. It's black and white. Either you're this or you're this. And there's never any in between. Right? You know, either you're wise or you're a fool. That's what the Bible is saying. Either you're wise or you're a fool. If you're wise, you're listening to the Word of God and you're obeying it. And you're a fool if you listen to the Word of God and you don't obey it. That's pretty fascinating, isn't it? Straightforward, black and white, no in between, no confusion about what the Bible is saying. So let's look at another passage that kind of says the same thing. All right, we'll go over to the book of James. All right, let me use this Bible so I can give you a page number here. <clears throat> go over to the book of James, Hebrews, James. It's over to your right. You just keep going towards the end of the book and you'll run into James. We're going to be in James chapter 2. All right, page 1,317, if you have one of these black Bibles. Okay. Actually, I want 1,316, James chapter 1. All right, everybody get there? 1,316? Got it? Mm -hmm. 892 is another possibility. I'm not sure. If you're not in James chapter 1, raise your hand. We can help you get there. 
Charlie, make sure everybody gets in the right place. All right. All right. James chapter 1. As you're turning there, I want you to listen so we can just keep moving, okay? The Bible says there in chapter 1, James chapter 1 and verse 22. The Bible says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Alright, so we learn there's two things here. Alright? So the Bible says there in verse number 22, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Then what's that next word? Deceiving your own selves. Okay? Everybody look up here. Alright? There are two types of people in this passage. There are those people that are deceived, and there are those people who are not deceived. Alright? What does it mean to be deceived? Anybody got an idea? Go ahead. To not obey the word, that's right. But what does it mean actually to be deceived, to be confused? You don't understand something, right? Okay? So either you're confused and you don't get it and you're deceived, right? Or you're not deceived. What does it take in order to be deceived, according to this passage? The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. What does it take to be deceived? To just be a hearer. You know, Someone who comes to church faithfully and they sit under the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God and they hear it over and over and over and over again and it never changes their life, they're deceived. They think they're doing right. They're coming to church. They're actually being faithful. They're sitting under the teaching and preaching of the Word of God. They may be reading their Bible every day, but, but kids, young people, that's not enough. The purpose for reading your Bible is that it might change your life. So that you can pattern your life according to this book. Okay? So you can be deceived or you cannot be deceived. And I hope that everybody in here will choose to not be deceived. That you'll want to do what the Bible says. We need to be doers of the Word. So you can be wise and you can be a doer, which means that you're not deceived. Right? Or you can be foolish and you can be deceived. And there's no in between. You're in one category or you're in the other. It's pretty straightforward, black and white, and it just makes sense. Now, there's another thing I want to look at. At the end of verse 25, the Bible says there that a doer of the word, a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. What does it take to be blessed? To be a doer of the word. Okay? You want God to bless your life, young person? Well, I want God to bless my life. I can't imagine what life would be without God's blessings on it. I want God to bless my life. In order for God to bless my life, you know what I have to do? I've got to obey His Word. I've got to obey His commandments. I've got to obey His instructions to me. That's all it takes. You are blessed in this passage as you are doing His commandments. So there's two types of people. There's blessed people, and then there's what? Those that are not blessed. I wonder which one you are. You're blessed if you're reading the Word and sitting under the teaching and preaching of the Word and being obedient to it. You're not being blessed of God if you're not doing those things. It's black and white. You're in one group or you're in the other. So you can be wise, you can be not deceived, and you can be blessed. Or you can be foolish, you can be deceived, and you cannot be being blessed. But it's one or the other. It's one or the other. Um... I want to show you another passage. You can go to the book of John. This is now turned to the left in your Bible. We'll go to John chapter 14. Right? John chapter 14. Let's see here. I think it's page 1170 in the Bible that I'm looking at. We'll look at verse number 21. How are we doing on time back there, Pastor Price? We're doing okay? 14. John chapter 14, verse 21. I want to show you another passage. It gives you a choice of two kinds of people to be. Right? And these are things I was reading there. I was reading in Matthew about the wise men and the foolish men, and all these other passages just came to my mind. And I started putting these down. I'm like, you know what? These all go together and they all make sense, and it's just black and white. Either you're in one group or you're in the other. 
I just wonder which one year you're in. John chapter 14, verse number 11, the Bible, or 21. 21. John chapter 14, verse number 21, the Bible says this. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. Okay, so it's the same thing that we've been talking about. You, in order to hath God's commandments, that means that you know them, you understand them, all right? And keepeth them, that which means that you obey them. So he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that what? That what? Love. Loveth me. Yeah. Who's that? Speaking here, if you have if this, if your Bible is in red letters, red letters means that Jesus is the one who's speaking here. Jesus says, Your love for me. He says, I know if you love me because of two things. You have my commandments, which means you know them, and you keep my commandments. You know what? There's two kinds of people. Those that love God and those that don't love God. It's pretty fascinating. It's black and white, isn't it? You know what? If you love God, there's two things that's going to be true about you. You're going to have His commandments and you're going to keep His commandments. If you don't love God, there's going to be at least one thing that's not true of you. You may know His commandments, but you don't keep them. And you know what that, that means? That's, that's an expression, right, of your life that says, my actions demonstrate that I don't love God. Because I don't, either don't have His commandments and I don't keep them, or I have His commandments and I still don't keep them. There's two kinds of people. Those that love God and that those that don't. Now there's another part of this verse, and I'm telling you, the next part of this verse just, just absolutely amazes me. Okay? So let's look at it from the beginning again. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me, right? So somebody who knows his commandments and obeys them. He that loves me shall be loved in my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Alright? Anybody know what that word manifest means? Alright? Let me show you here. Alright? I'm going to manifest to you what's in my pocket. Okay? So what do I do? Okay? So what's in my pocket? Cell phone, right? You didn't know that before, right? But I manifested it to you. So what I do, I just I just showed you, right? Okay? So what does the Bible say here? The Bible says that I will manifest myself to him. There's two types of people. There are people who God is revealing himself to, and then there's people that God is not revealing himself to. Isn't that amazing? I'm telling you, when I read this verse, I mean, it's just so mind-boggling to me. There is a responsibility that we have, that we have. Our actions will determine whether God will manifest Himself to you. That is powerful. You know, there's a lot of people, and they say, you know, they'll, they'll pray and, and say, Oh, God, I want to know you. Will you show me who you are? The Bible doesn't say if you pray to God and ask Him for that, you know, that you'll understand who God is. You know what you need to do? If you want to really get to know God and you want God to be revealing Himself to you, you need to get in this book, you need to find out what God expects of you, and then you need to be obedient. And as you do that, you'll be blessed in your deeds, and as you continue to do what God is telling you to do, you'll realize that God is right, you'll realize that God is true, His way is right, His way is righteous, and you will just you will begin to know God like you have never known God before. And all of that boils down to, what are you doing with God's Word? What are you doing with this Word? I'm telling you, there is no more important decision that you can make that will help you in your life than to get one of these, get yourself a Bible, and you begin to learn the Bible. And study it. Anthony, you read the Bible? You read it every day? You need to be like Anthony. You gotta get yourself a Bible and you gotta read it every day. That's pretty simple, isn't it? You want to know who God is? Get yourself a Bible and start reading it. You want God to reveal Himself to you? Get yourself a Bible. Start reading it every day. It's pretty simple. You want to be a blessed man? Get yourself a Bible. Start reading it every day. You want to be more noble than other people when God makes comparisons? Get yourself a Bible and read it every day. It's pretty simple, isn't it? I'm challenging you. Challenging you. Get yourself a Bible. Read it. Learn what God says. 
That's fresh. You have a Bible? Yes, sir. You read it every day? Yes, sir. Charlie, you have a Bible? Yes, sir. Read it every day? Yes, sir. I have a Bible? I read it every day. God will bless your life if you'll do that. Obey what you read. Worth all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to that word. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity I've had to preach your word today. Lord, I thank you for strengthening my conviction, Lord, as I was reading your word. Lord, just reminded me of these different passages that I was familiar with, Lord, and how they go together. And Lord, how you know uh, about our lives. And uh, Lord, you make comparisons. And Lord, there are some people who you would consider to be more noble than others. And Lord, there are some people who because of their actions and the choices that they're making, Lord, you are doing more to reveal yourself to them uh, than you are to others. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you love us and that you've told us these things in your word. Father, I pray that every young person here, Lord, if they don't have a Bible, that they'd get one. Lord, if they have a Bible, that they'd be reading it. And Lord, that they would purpose in their life to make it a priority. Lord, in a daily habit, routine of something that they do in order to learn about you and to be able to be blessed in their life because they understand what you expect of them. Father, I pray that you'd be with the rest of this evening. I know we're going to have a great time. And I thank you for each young person who's here today. I pray that they've been helped by the preaching of your word. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.